Hi, everyone. Sorry for not being there in person again. Um, something is going on, and I'll explain everything to you uh, once I get back. But until I do, uh, I have created this video for you to continue with your learning um, so that you don't have to slow down and you don't have to you know, be delayed just because of some dude who can't make it to teach your course, right? Because uh, ultimately, let's be honest, um, your learning, your education, your progress, your credit, those are all yours to earn. And that's not just simply for a teacher to give, right? There's a reason why you are here for a lot of you. And that is to progress to, because you need this credit for something else, something bigger and better. And so please take this seriously. And I hope that you will uh, keep up. Um, I'm planning to give some kind of, as I said before, some kind of exit card or entry card uh, when I see you again. Um, and so, and then just around the corner after the weekend is probably going to be some kind of quiz on this expanding and factoring business. So stay tuned and study hard. Today, oh, uh, please be good to the substitute, uh, substitute teacher and uh, listen to what they have to say. Uh, don't abuse the washroom system. And also, if the, the examples that we're going to do are going a little fast, please ask the substitute to... Uh, pause the video occasionally so that you can finish copying. Today's lesson is going to be just the first page because the second page is all practice questions that I expect you to do. Okay, I know they seem like a lot, but they can be done very quickly as long as you keep up and uh, pay a lot of attention today. Today, we are dabbling into factoring. That is, we're doing the basics of factoring that is called common factoring. We are looking for something in common and factoring. Now, what does factoring mean? Uh, the easiest way to describe factoring is the opposite of expanding. So consider this. If I had two times x plus three, and I asked you to expand it, well, you would take that two, and you would distribute it to every single thing in the bracket. So you would get two x plus six. Well, factoring is actually the exact opposite. If I gave you 2x plus 6 and I said, hey, could you rewrite this as a product, as a multiplication of two different things? Well, how would you do that? The only thing you have to do is take a look at this term and this term and see if there's anything you can divide from both of them nicely. Like I could divide two out of two and two out of six, and I will get two nice rounded whole numbers. But uh, if I divided what three from six, I can't divide a three from a two. Two divided by three gives you something weird. I don't. I don't want to deal with that. And so, your goal is to take a look at all the terms that are given in an expression, and see if there's anything common in all three. The first example is pretty straightforward, which was intentional. Taking a look at the first term, taking a look at the second term, taking a look at the third term, I see that I can divide a four out of every single term. So four divided by four, that's a one. This is just a one x squared. A negative four divided by a four would be a negative one x. And a positive four divided by four is a positive one. Is there anything else in common between these three terms in the bracket? The answer is no. And so you're done. That's it. That's it. The just thing is, you, um, fact, common factoring is not limited to just the coefficient. That is the, the first number that you see in the term. So you'll see in just a second. That's the second example. Second example, I see 2x squared, I see a 6x, and I see just a negative 8 with nothing else. Hmm. I, don't, I can't factor out any x's because this one doesn't have any x to give, but 2, 6, and 8 are all multiples of 2. So I'm going to divide a 2 out of every single term. So 2 divided by 2, that is a 1x squared. 6x divided by 2, that's a positive 3x. And a negative 8 divided by 2, that's a negative 4. Is there anything else I can divide out? I don't think so. So that's it. OK, 
Good. I'm going to move on to question three. Question C, two, three, and four. There's actually nothing I can divide out of any of those nicely. Well, I could divide a one or a negative one, but that doesn't really help a situation. But instead, take a look. What I notice is that every single term has an, a common A value, a variable. So I'm going to divide that out. 2AB divided by A. If I just divide that by A, they divide and turn into 1. Long story short, visually speaking, it sort of looks like the A was plucked out of the term and leaving just 2B. Same with this one. 3AC, you divide the A, I get 3C. And 4AD, I divide the A, I get 4D. Is there anything else I can divide from these three terms? The answer is no. And so I'm done. Uh, I'd like you to check the answer key for all of these because, again, it's exactly the same thing. I'll give you a hint. Negative 3, 5, and negative 11. There's nothing nice I can divide from the coefficients. But if you take a look at the terms, this term has an x and a y. Rather, it has two x's to give with one y to give. This one has only one x, but two y's to give. And this one has only one x and only one y to give. What could we divide out? The answer is, I can divide out a single x and a single y. Give that a shot and check your answers with the answer key that I provide online. Okay, I'll give you a minute. I'll give you a minute because I'm going to skip E and go straight to F, which I think will confuse a lot of people. Okay. Our lesson ends with, uh, with F and then the last word question here. All right, so let's do this. F is going to be a little bit tricky. Let me first write out what the answer is going to be. I'm going to ask you to take maybe half a minute to see if you understand how that just happened. Okay. The idea here is it may seem like hocus pocus, but I'm going to try to color code some of these things to draw your attention to where everything else is going. Okay. And then x plus one happens to be common in both. So it was common factored. If that doesn't make sense to you, that's okay. I'm going to try to rewrite in a different way. Instead of saying x plus 1, what if I told you that this was, uh, the question was originally 3x times uh, a minus 2 times a. What would you tell me the answer was going to be? Well, you factor out the a, right? So you left with a multiply by 3x minus 2. Or another way you could write it is 3x minus 2 multiplied with a. Right? So if you can say that a is factored out because those two are common, well, why can't I say that this entire bracket is common? And so I am going to divide the entire thing, entire term by x plus 1. I'm going to factor that out. Does that make sense? Maybe if I do this, what if I said it was 3x um, exclamation mark plus mushroom, right? Minus 2 times exclamation mark plus mushroom. Do you see how the stuff in the brackets is a common, I guess, uh, a common expression? It, it's a common bundle. 
if you see that these two are common and therefore can be factored out, well, don't be fooled. X plus one, X plus one, they are just the same expression and they can be factored out. Okay, here's another example. I'm gonna clear this. Another example. What if I said there was a 2mn minus 5 plus 11n minus 5? Well, what does that equal? Again, n minus 5 is a common binomial that I'm going to divide out of both, leaving just 2m plus 11. And this part, please be particularly careful because this is going to be so important in one of the future exercises that we have. Okay, as a bit of a hint, when you go down here, please make sure you try some of these questions like C and D on the back page, uh, E, um, F, a lot of these are exactly the same thing. So I hope you get some practice with that, okay? The last example, this is a kind of A style question or even a T style question that you might get on the test. So put a little star next to that saying, watch out, something like this might come on a future test or a quiz. Here we go. Um, uh, you must get comfortable factoring as a technique and not just factoring for the sake of factoring. Like I'm not trying to teach you uh, factoring as a math technique just because it's something that was taught in the curriculum. It's actually really useful uh, for problem solving a lot of things. Here's one example. It's a silly example, but it sort of proves the point. What is the unknown height of the triangle? The area of the triangle is area... Um, equals half base times height. Right now, the base is 20. Okay. What is the unknown height of the triangle? So this is essentially area is equal to half base times height. All right. So it's going to be 10 times height. All right. Um, yeah, let's get to it. Uh, your goal essentially is to turn this part right here into this. I'll say it one more time. Your goal is to take this area equation for this triangle and make it look as similar to the area of a triangle as possible. Because if we do, we can identify what the base and the height is, okay? If that doesn't make sense to you, let me restart. Here's a question where the area is given as an, exp uh, as an expression, okay? However, I also know that the area of a triangle has a generic uh, formula of half times the base times the height. And that's as far as you go. The question doesn't give you any more information, so we're sort of stuck. However, what I do notice is that there is a 20 there, which represents the base of the triangle. And so instead of writing it like this, I can say that half times 20 times height is equal to 10, meter, uh, 10 m squared minus 20 m plus 20. I'm going to go further. Half and 20 are normal numbers that I can multiply. So I'm going to multiply half with 20. Half with 20, that's 10 times height. 10 m squared minus 20 m plus 20 is equal to 10 times height. Hmm. So I'm stuck. What's the point? How do I calculate the height? I don't know. Well, actually, you sort of do. I'm going to take this equation right here, or this expression right here, and I am going to try to make it look as close to that as possible 
by factoring out a 10. Remember, this expression has three different numbers that all are multiple of 10. So if I factor out a 10, I am left with m squared minus 2m plus 2. And just from knowing how to common factor, we are able to match the area formula with this equation. So the question didn't tell you what to do, but they simply asked you, hey, can you calculate the height for me? Or can you find an equation for the height? And you say, yeah. If you tell me that the base is a 20, then I know through common factoring, I know for sure that my height will follow the expression m squared minus 2m plus 2. That's it. So this is a kind of a T question. I don't tell you exactly what you're supposed to do. I just ask for something and you have to figure out how to get there. Right. So it's a bit of a mix and match game. This is why I say um, in this question, you must factor to successfully manipulate an equation to your benefit. Okay. As always, everyone, there are homework questions that you can do on the bottom. Do your best. If you want to test your metal and to see if you understand how to do um, those kind of geometry style T questions, come take a look. There is a T question for you. Number seven. Here's another T question right here. These are all from the textbook. Suffer well. And when I see you again, you can ask me questions. All right. Once again, I invite you to see these videos again if I went a little bit too fast. And also check the answer key that I will post online for you. Okay. Study hard and I'll see you soon.